What's up everyone, Talon here. What was that? Talon here and welcome back to the channel. We have an emergency product review. And what I mean emergency product review is that it's very, very new. Uh, just literally got some just to take product pictures of. And I think it's kind of important to share with you guys just to spread the information, be one of the first ones to officially review it and just get it some growth naturally all over YouTube. So what we're gonna be talking about today is certainly not a new brand, but it is going to be one of the newer products from them. And that is going to be a newly released Alpha holster. Now this is coming from a brand Milwaukee Custom Kydex, MC Kydex, if you guys are local to the Milwaukee area, or just a huge fan of nicer holsters for the airsoft and real steel market. Now there's obviously a very wide range of holster manufacturers available, and why go with MC Kydex? Well, seeing firsthand what he has in his warehouse, um, he does do a, an excellent job with being immaculate to the detail. He takes a very long time working over individual holsters and making sure that they are up to a standard that he finds acceptable. He is wearing his own holsters. I, for a long time before I knew Josh and met him as a friend and now I'm doing freelance work for him. Um, before I even was doing any of that, I was carrying and utilizing his holsters for airsoft, for real steel as well, for uh, outside the waistband and inside the waistband holsters. So if you guys are not familiar with some of the holsters that Josh is making, they're actually going to be a Kydex manufactured holster that he's utilizing uh, different printing techniques in order to do different type of camo patterns, different textures, different patterns, or just doing solid colors. Now they're very, very unique because he is doing them to individual uh, prints as well, which means not only are you able to utilize these holsters for your standard Glocks, for your standard FNs, for your MNPs, for your Airsoft haters and uh, Elite Force 1911s, but you're also able to utilize these in most cases for real steel uh, manufactured pistols as well. And he has a whole separate line as well. They're going to be more accurately spec for real steel pistols, uh, just because there's a lot of sizing discrepancies between airsoft and real steel, as a lot of us gun guys know. Now, I am by no means in the holster market, holster manufacturing industry or anything like that. Like I'm not a part of that world. So my innate knowledge of holsters, holster manufacturers, who's using what, what's kind of up and coming, what's been utilized, I am far from the guy to ask. You know, I'm just another end user. I'm just another idiot on YouTube making videos for fun. Um, I'm just another cool guy. So my knowledge is, again, uh, worth only a grain of salt. So this here is a very quick uh, mock-up. You can see very easily here that we have a, well, to you, it would be harder to distinguish between a left-hand or a right-hand orientation. And that's the beauty of what this holster is designed is that it's, it could be either one. He's utilizing two different, uh, or two of the same size and grouping uh, mounting uh, positions on the left or right hand side, which albeit it looks a little gaudy if you have these sticking out, but that's the beauty of the product inherently is that it's designed for the end user to have a lot more customization compared to a lot of other holster manufacturers that I have seen at least on the market. Uh, so in the case of this one, it is uh, been etched out on the right hand side here and we have cuts or uh, at least stencils as to where you could cut these guards. So we have on the very top here, a high guard. Uh, the first sketch there is a medium guard and a low guard. And I have actually here in my backpack, a pre-assembled uh, high guard that you may have for whatever reason, if you like to have um, something in your way. Of course, it's the very last one in my pack. Uh, this guy right here, again, a right hand designated uh, holster, but it's cut to be that low guard. And the very uh, opposite here that would go against your body is actually where you would uh, have that protection for clothing, belts, so on and so forth, uh, to protect any stuff from getting caught as you're grabbing for your pistol. And then we have on the very bottom here, the full length here is designed to be a 17 and 34 cut, 
you could go, I wanna say a half of an inch higher in order to do a 17 exact cut. And then you could go even a little bit higher for a 19 specific cut. So the one that I have here again is going to be a 19 cut with a low uh, cut guard. And the one that I have here is a 34 cut and a high cut guard. Uh, both of these are uh, a right hand uh, orientated uh, pistol holster. Now I'll also compare that to some of his other options, or at least one of the other options you have. Uh, and this is something that you may have noticed if you are collecting some holsters for yourself, utilize a lot of holsters uh, in your kit assembly, whatever have you, is you don't have a holster that could be utilized whether your pistol is light bearing or non-light bearing. That's innately some of the struggles that I have seen with holster manufacturers. And to my knowledge, in order to get a good retention of holster that is going to be a hard shell style, not a nylon fabric, you have to have something that is either light bearing or non-light bearing. When you get into the nylon or other fabrics that are designed to have some stretch or have some additional bungee retention versus an actual click and uh, friction retained retention, retained retention, that was stupid. Um, something like this, it just has to be either light bearing or non-light bearing. So some like myself, I've opted for a lot of my holsters to be a light bearing holster because that is the majority of what I have mounted on my pistols is a light of some, some sort, um, of some sort. So this is something that I have in my collection or at least the alpha ones I will be getting in my collection. Um, I have his other holsters in the light bearing configuration already. Morning or afternoon. It's 2.51, afternoon. <laughs> Not cool, bro. Not cool. So now, obviously, after you've decided what type of pistol you're gonna be utilizing, I'm assuming that's a decision that you've made well before this, hey, that's a cool looking stick. So after you've decided what pistol you're going to be utilizing, it's to decide whether you're going to have a light mounted on it or not. And that I think is going to be a relatively easy decision, I think, one that you have to make for yourself. After that, of course, it's deciding what type of mounting you're going to be utilizing, whether it be a drop leg, a, a thigh mounted, a outside the waistband, inside the waistband, chest mounted, um, so on, so forth. Uh, it's from what I understand, again, from someone who's not in the holster manufacturing market specifically, um, there seem to be a lot of relatively universal mounts designed around having one type of mount that is an all for one. So let me explain. So the mounting bracket that I actually have on this light bearing model here, um, I actually forgot the name of it and I don't have good internet here in order to identify what it is. So uh, this is the name of it. So again, as someone who's not really a part of the industry or really part of the holster uh, market, it's <laughs> in my light research, uh, it seems that a lot of people, regardless of what brand, uh, they prefer or what brand they like to utilize in most cases it seems to be very very common for uh, people to be utilizing this type of cross mount in order to mount their holsters the most universally um, again <laughs> it's unfortunately something that i have forgotten and i'm not in a good internet uh, space so uh, this is the name of it i'm just going to call it the crossbar um, and this, again, from what I can discern, is the most common. People that, regardless of what their preferred brand is, or if they want something that's gonna be the most universal option to give them the most options to mount. Again, that drop leg, that thigh mount, uh, that uh, 90 degree on the chest type of system, uh, this is going to offer that most modular type of option to give them the most customization for a myriad of different loadouts that they would want to use either at that time or in the future. Um, and again, it's something that I utilize, it's something that I've seen a lot of use from, and it's something that has been very easy to get on there, uh, attach whatever I want on there. Um, again, it's something that Josh has designed um, 
to be as easy as possible for the user end. And I've found it to be very, very easy. I am satisfied with my MC Kydex product and my MC Kydex products. Um, again, I've been utilizing his stuff well before I knew him. I like his stuff a lot. Uh, so I will continue to uh, support and I'm gonna add one of those into my own collection. So stay tuned uh, in the future for a long-term review after being after utilizing it. Uh, it's seen field use and what future expectations and thoughts are. Uh, but I think that it's going to be a phenomenal product and one that I think is going to explode certainly. Um, having more distributors that will offer it to the general public um, just due to the amount of minimal, I would say custom details needed. Um, it is still a custom molded uh, holster, but it has the least amount of fine details that need to be looked at with every single holster. And that's unfortunately a killing detail with a lot of holster manufacturing, as far as what I can understand. Um, but you also don't wanna get to the point where in the case of having options for both airsoft and real steel, you don't wanna get bogged down in having a general use holster that's going to fit the most options available. Because at that point, you don't offer a good product. And again, I am satisfied with my MC Kydex product. It is good. Um, so with that, we are all set here. I am, however, if, if you will let me, I do think that I do have some final advice for you. I wouldn't say dad advice, but something that I think that a lot of people should consider. Um, as I'm on the, the beach here in late winter, going into very early spring, um, I just see a, a bunch of litter, a bunch of trash. I mean, I walk past these smaller cliffs here that are made of just natural earth and I found a Reese's peanut butter wrapper in the mud. Now, granted, that could be from a crazy circumstance, but it, I'm also on the beach here, well away from the general public. I mean, this is a, a park where there, this is not a residential area. And I walked past a little kid's um, toy slide. And that amongst the myriad of other things that I can see just right here, I mean, pen, is that a syringe? Uh, paper, parchment, balloons, a cottage cheese cup, um, milk, tap. I mean, this is all just gross, disgusting stuff that does not need to be here. Please, I beg you, keep care of your environment. Keep care of this environment of any environment. Pick up after yourselves. Um, leave no trace of course just be a good human being we're only on this earth for a finite amount of time uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that we should trash it and disregard it only to kick the problems down for the next generation let's leave not only this earth in its physical condition but also pass down any type of morals ethics and general use knowledge to the younger generation. Um, they are going to be a new wave of generation because of the amount of technology that they will have at their disposal. And it should be imperative that we give them as much information as possible. Because looking around at a lot of people, um, they need way more than just knowledge to get them through the day. Um, but it's the next generation that's going to make or break uh, the future of this planet. That being said, if you have any questions about holsters, uh, the MC Kydex holsters, let me know down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer each and every single one of them. Uh, like I said, it's three o'clock right now. We've got winds coming in from the south um, and they're bringing some cold, uh, cold frigid air with them. Uh, so I'm gonna go home now. There's a shotgun shell right there. I mean, it's the wad, it's not the actual shell, but disgusting.